Hi, Gig. Hi, Michael. Hey, congratulations on your new film, Dominique. Thank you. Thank you. I'm um I'm I, I'm very proud of it. Let's just say that. And I've been looking forward for, to people seeing it. You know, it's been done for almost a year and a half, but Lionsgate had such a backlog of films, so it takes a while sometimes for these things to get out, you know. You know yeah. what? But but this is this is a film that I eager to watch on a Friday and Saturday night. I mean, it's 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 not, it's, it's a guilty pleasure, you know these yeah. these type of action films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let let's hear it from you first. Is where the original idea came from for Dominique? You know, it's funny. People think that wonder if it was one specific seed that spawned this idea, and normally it is. I'll read a news article or something like that. But to be honest with you, it's very simple. I grew up on James Bond movies. I wanted to make a James Bond movie all my life. I knew the chances of that are going to be very slim, so I decided to come up with my own character. I love the female Bond women as much as I like Bond, so I said, you know what? I'm going to make a female Bond. So my own my own character, my own creation, um, but an anti-hero, and she's going to be deadly. And, and, and then, you know, my partner, Oksana, we kind of Toss that idea around. She is to me is the quintessential Bond woman. She's Ukrainian. She's six foot tall, right? I mean, she's perfect. I mean, so so with that idea in mind, I wanted to do something that kind of where this character is kind of traveling the world and saving the innocent and helping the innocent, kind of like the Equalizer a little bit too. Yeah. And so it just evolved. And I figured, you know, what a mashup it would be. We're having a Ukrainian, Eastern European, in, wandering through Latin America, right? Because Latin America, I mean, the, the two cultures are so different, right? And so, uh, and it, it evolved from there, you know? And uh, the original story was uh, a big movie. It was called Rise of the Phoenix. It was actually too big. And it started with her introducing uh, our character, a mysterious woman, Gringo, Gringa, uh, working in a church kitchen in Latin America, in Colombia. And, uh, and then she befriends this little boy who uh, is his sister's kidnapped by human traffickers. And she decides to, to help him. And you realize she's deadly and so forth. Anyway, we tried to raise the financing for that film for, I don't know, four years. And it was just too big. And I'm like, damn, I got to introduce this character to the world somehow. So I'm like, what if I write a prequel? Something small. Takes place at a house. <laughs> right? She, maybe she crash, she, she crash lands her plane. How does she first arrive in Latin America? I kind of skipped that in the, in the other movie. Okay, she crash lands. She gets shot down. She wanders off. She meets a family. And, you know, and the rest is history. So, Yeah. I was I was I was gonna say you you know one 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 of the things that uh, that works well is Oksana in this film and you you worked with her for quite some time I mean tell tell us about about working with her for for all all the all these years um, yeah I mean um, she was in my first feature Lana's Reign years back um, um, I kind of don't count that feature in my roster I mean I love it it was a great film but you know I I believe in three strikes you're out. And I've that if, if I played the base of the game, I'd be already out. Um, but there were like ten years between that one I did, and then and then and then uh, Savaged or Avenged. And so, okay, it's a new game. I decided I was learning on that one and so forth. But anyway, to answer your question, we met on that. Um, we became very good friends, very close. Um, she's kind of became my muse over the years, and and I'm very, very lucky in that way. And so she inspired every single script that I've made up until now. She inspired Avenge, and she was supposed to be in it, but she didn't want to be in it because it was too violent. It was too grotesque. It was a horror film. And she, she passed on it. And I'm like, okay. You know, so then so then I did uh, Russian Bride with her. She inspired that role as well. And then again, and then leading to to um, to um, um Dominique. Um, she's amazing. I mean, like I said, she has been my muse, and I'm fortunate to be able to use her in these roles. I mean, she's star quality, man. You know, she deserves to to be a star and i wanted the world to know her i really have been trying very hard to get to to do something that would but that would pop that would make the world see wow this woman is amazing and um i think hopefully we've done it yeah you you certainly did and uh and one of the things that i love about this film and you know in you probably hear the comparisons to another Lionsgate franchise, you know, of, a, you know, like those John Wick movies. But uh, tell us how you carefully crafted these, you know, these scenes, these gun fu scenes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that that's why we love the John Wick movie, because it it these action sequences. Yeah. Oh, like it's like watching a ballet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll be I love that. I love the action. I love the 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 choreography, and I'm very involved with it. 
Um, basically, um, I, I, I don't know if you remember the show years back, 2009. It was called, it was on Spike TV. It was called Deadliest Warrior. And there'd be these mashups between a ninja and a gladiator. Okay, well, I directed all the battles on that. So I got my chops kind of really learning how to, to choreograph and work and to do fight scenes for two seasons on that show. So I was able to really, and, and then over the years with Savage, the, the action was kind of the standout or Avenge. They, I keep calling it Avenge. The action was the standout. And in the Russian Bride, in the final se sequence, the action is the standout. So I knew, knew I had to do an action film. Um, yeah, I mean, this, I wanted, I like action that, is, that people watch and go, that feels awesome. believable. It's not like a comic book, you know, it actually feels like, can she really get away with that? And so that whole night battle sequence where she takes them out, I really, it really, I, how can she do this? I was thinking, I really brainstormed and it came to me, you know, and it's a fact that if you turn on light, bright lights on, on your, on, on someone, they're, they, they're blinded for about 10 seconds. I mean, I go to the bathroom at night and I turn the light on the bathroom and I try to make my way back to the bed. I can't get there. Right. So it, it, it so I, so based on that whole concept, I worked in the idea with the teenage daughter, turning the lights on. And then I was thinking, how could she attack 30 guys and make it somewhat believable? So I, in the middle, I was brainstorming. And then in the middle of the night, again, I, I got up and I, the idea hit me. And I, I was literally in my underwear. I put the phone out and I said, okay, it's a pyramid of guys moving towards the house. And at the back is like a few guys and it grows towards the house. And if she attacks the first one silently, stabs them, and then she takes his gun Shoots the first next two guys. That's three guys out. Okay, now they start to hear there's something happening at the rear. Then the next guy turns. She stops him. And, and so I really had to think it through. How could I didn't want the audience to watch him? They're like, oh come on, this. There's like, actually there's somewhat it's somewhat believable the way it's executed, right? So, so yeah, I really think those things through. Yeah. Now, now I want I want to give credit to that stunt team, especially for for that scene. And it, and it seems like every film they they have like a stunt team that you know, or a stunt company that they work with. Yeah. Was there a specific stunt team in Colombia that you actually worked with or do you have to import it, um, them um, for, for that particular No, stunt? no, no, there was a stunt team, uh, Copa de Gracia, I believe that was the company's name. Um, um, and uh, I believe, I hope I'm not wrong, but I think that's what, that, what the name of the company. Um, and uh, yeah, they were amazing. I mean, we did the choreography here in America with um, James Liu, he's a, a, a expert. I, like I said, I conceived of the choreography and then James Liu and I kind of fine tuned it to make sure it was believable. And James Liu had done Big Trouble Little China. He's worked with Jackie Chan. He's worked with a lot of people. So he helped really fine tune Oksana's posturing and her movement, right? And then there's another gentleman, Billy Smith, who's a stunt great stunt uh, coordinator, fight choreographer. And he did the kitchen fight scene with her and he, you know, I let him run with that. So we we taught we taught Oksana everything here, and then we recorded it, took it to Colombia because those guys couldn't get to Colombia, and then in Colombia uh, we had their the Copa de Gracia team look at the uh, the video and kind of choreograph the whole sequence with her, and so forth. And we only had like two three weeks to do that part, but they're fast. They were so sharp and they were really good. Great team. All the guys were pros, real pros. One, one one last thing, Michael. How how is the uh, experience yeah. of filmmaking in Colombia overall? It's wonderful. It's a beautiful country. I mean, it, you go, you land, and you're just inspired by everything you see. The only the only thing is that I'm I come from a very guerrilla filmmaking perspective. I haven't not worked in the studio system, so I haven't been spoiled. I'm used to grabbing that camera and just shooting something if I see it, you know, and really kind of pushing people and working long days and small breaks, right? So when we did our schedule, um, it was supposed to be like 12 hour days, you know, like we do here, or maybe it was 11, I'm not sure. But um, when I get there, we start shooting. And then I started to realize, wait a second, how come everything is moving so slow? How come I don't have the time, you know? I'm I'm starting to lose time, and I didn't think that it was that, that it was planned that poorly. And then they go, well, first two hours in Colombia, they spend it with breakfast and getting ready, and then they take a whole hour for lunch, and that's on the clock. And then and then and before you know it, I only had eight hours per day, sometimes seven and a half. I'm like, wait a second, I can't work like that. And it was very difficult. So so we were pushed for time. Oksana many times was like, what do you mean we're done? We have, I'm not even done with the scene. We need to keep going. And they had like a hard out. Right. So we had to adapt. And literally we they you know, they we had eventually we had to negotiate. Uh, we had three pickup days scheduled at the end, two or three. And we literally had to take those hours 
and and and, and kind of take away days from the end and add hours to days so that we didn't have to um um uh, you know um do, uh, so that they could do some overtime throughout the shoot and then we didn't have any pickup days at the end we literally used them all up so um uh, the bottom line was it was beautiful it was wonderful the crews are hard working I'm just not used to, they work like a studio system, like they're a union. Like they literally have these breaks and these rules. You can't break the rules. And it, it was kind of, not, I'm not used to that. Give me, give me extra money. Give me, you know, 10, 20 million dollars. And I can, I can do that. You know what I mean? But on this budget, it was just very difficult. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I, I hope uh, Dominique uh, is successful because I want, I want more. So Rise it. Hopefully, you. your, your your next film, Phoenix movie, gets funded right. again, and we could see more of Dominique. So, thank you very much, Michael, for speaking to us. Thank you so much, Gig.